Hello and welcome to part two of Parks and Recommendations, which is the name of this series. Uh, today we're going to be talking about some best friends on the show Parks and Rec. We have Tom Haverford and Donna Meagle, who kind of exemplify that relationship. And then we have Leslie Nope's two best friends, which is Ben Wyatt and Ann Perkins. Um, we are going to start with, I'm Charlie Simpkins, the digital consultant at the Mississippi Library Commission and the moderator for this episode. Uh, we are going to start with Alex. Who do you have? Well, I have three books for Tom Haverford. Also, my name is Alex Brower, and I am the Information Services Director. Um, we also have these other two people. Hey, I'm Mary Rogers Beale, and I am the Talking Book Services Director here at the Library Commission. And I'm Miranda Vaughn. I'm a reference and archives librarian here at MIT. So in the spirit of talking about Tom Haverford, who is one of the people who of course works in the department, he is a wannabe playboy. Um, he is often confused for an immigrant, but he is from South Carolina. And as some people would say, country is a biscuit. Um, in the spirit of him, I have draped myself in luxurious velvets. Uh, I am wearing my most bejeweled earrings today. I washed my hair last night, so I'm really just living my best life. Um, and the first book that I picked for him is called The Encyclopedia of the Exquisite. And it just lists luxurious things. It talks about like fancy people stuff. Um, and I really think he would probably maybe read it, but he would also just like have it at his house. And because look at it, it's so beautiful. He would have it on his, you know, artisanal bookshelf that he got from Bluche. Um, yes, and they would probably be his family Bible. Right? <laughs> on the coffee table. This guy's in there. He probably knows oh, who wow. he is. <laughs> uh, so I really think he would, you know, maybe get some home decoration tips from this, um, some fabric ideas. I don't know. I just really think he would enjoy it. Does it have a recipe for cheeky cheeky parm parm? <laughs> I don't know if there are recipes in here, but I'm sure that like fancy vocabulary is one of the things that they talk about. Sure. I feel like yeah, I anybody. Sorry. No, but I feel like anybody who came to his apartment, he'd be like, "You gotta look at this book." look yeah. at what book I have. Like, yeah, and they would be organized by color. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Because that's how it, you know, that's how it would look best. That's how they organize it on like Goop or whatever he reads. I feel like he would write a volume two, like self-published. It would just be like a journal that he's writing down his thoughts of what is exquisite. <laughs> Encyclopedia of the Exquisite by Tom. That's what he Tom would edition. Okay. All right. Well, I have um, some books picked out for Donna, Tom's best friend, basically. Um, I really love Tom and Donna's friendship, to be honest. <laughs> oh, and I also dressed in Donna style with some animal print, but make it cool, <laughs> cool, um, <laughs> and colorful. But you know, Donna, very, very Donna, -esque. right? <laughs> I tried. Um, Donna is probably the coolest person in the Parks and Recreation office, in my opinion. And, you know, she's just sassy and unapologetic and, you know, car. <laughs> yeah, she loves her Mercedes. As we know, don't, you know, don't mess with the Mercedes. Don't ask to borrow it. But the first book I wanted to pick for Donna, I don't have a copy of the cover, but it's Midnight Sun by Stephanie Meyer. And it's, I think it's just the first Twilight story, but told in Edward's eyes. And, you know, she just, she loves the Twilight series and she, you know, she would want to know what Edward was thinking throughout the whole thing. Her and Tom would both have read this yeah. and would, they probably have like a book club, you know, where they read us stuff and they would thoroughly enjoy it, at least. I hope that they would. 
they would probably make some major life decisions based on what was in the book like oh well edward was actually thinking this so. yeah. yeah yeah it would really i think it's a paradigm shift yeah i think we should elect someone to train themselves to tracy's um office <laughs> store or her desk and demand that she put midnight sun <laughs> in the time capsule that we're releasing this friday yeah there's no good chaining places in there not that I'm like, <laughs> have you thought about this? <laughs> we don't have any good like furniture. <laughs> yeah, there's no like exposed pipes like there are in Leslie's. But you could just like sit in there because if she gets closer than six feet, then you know she's violating the social distancing rules. Right. There's not much that she can do. I think this is a good plan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Agreed. I'm for it. <laughs> Um, okay, so my person needs a very lengthy introduction, so give me a moment. Um, she is a beautiful tropical fish. She is a cunning, pliable, chestnut-haired sunfish. She's a beautiful, sassy mannequin come to life, a beautiful, glowing sun goddess, a beautiful, naive, sophisticated, newborn baby, a beautiful, talented, brilliant, powerful musk ox, a rainbow-infused space unicorn, a poetic, noble land mermaid, an opalescent tree shark, a beautiful, rule-breaking moth, a tricky mink, a beautiful spinster, a beautiful unicorn nurse, and a perfect sunflower. Ladies and gentlemen, she is Anne Perkins. And she yes. was no best friend. Beautifully performed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Leslie would be proud. <laughs> so my first book for Anne, because she is a nurse and she does have a very busy schedule. So I feel like when she reads, she's probably not going to want to read anything that's going to be like super in-depth and stuff. Like she's a romantic. She might like something that's kind of quirky and a quick read. So I chose for her first Bridget Jones's Diary. Um, little British humor, a little single lady humor. I feel like it's something that she would enjoy reading after a long day, taking care of people at the hospital. And um, yeah, it's just a cute, a cute book for someone like Anne Perkins. I think she definitely reads for like a little bit of escapism when she gets home, you know, especially when she's entangled with one of her not so great boyfriends. Um, I mean, if I had to come home to Andy Dwyer mm. laying on his behind, making me cook him pancakes, I would definitely need some like Bridget Jones diary, hilarious, girlish fun. Yep. Exactly. Take my mind off of it. Although I can't say that he would have lasted as long. Uh, if he was <laughs> acting like that. Having had a broken leg, um, his behavior did not reflect well on the rest of us. Weren't it both legs that were broke, though? Yeah. I mean, yeah, but still. <laughs> <laughs> he was still being crazy, and I didn't throw my snacks around, you know? <laughs> I just ate them like that might person. impede your ability to get up and make pancakes if both legs are not at a hundred percent. They've taken pretty significant. Mm -hmm. When well, he had that that grabber thing, there's yeah. nothing you can do with the grabber. Make a crepe. It's easier, probably. I don't actually know. I haven't made crepes. Sure, you, flip. <laughs> <laughs> you don't flip a crepe. You just put it on there. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I've seen someone make a crepe using a uh, shopping cart turned over on its side in a frying pan so if he could set that up in the living room exactly you can make it on a hot plate but Anne would probably lose her house in that scenario how she didn't already is yeah. is a miracle and she was a saint so my character is Ben Wyatt um, he's a very lovable character he does seem to me to be like a stick in the mud, but in the end, it takes me always a minute to remember that he is a big geek at heart. He has a lot of fandoms. 
one of his biggest fandoms is the Game of Thrones, Song of Ice and Fire, a little fandoms. Um, Leslie, whenever, I think it was in the anniversaries episode, um, he got her a scrapbook and she got him a replica uh, Iron Throne from that series. And he was very enamored with it. So my recommendation would be Dune by Frank Herbert. Um, it's an older series. It, this one started in 1965. The author released um, six books. Um, he died in 86. Then his son and another author picked up the series in the 90s, and they've continued it. It's had spinoff series. There's a lot of world building. And while I think he would like it because it does focus on like social struggles and like individual um, loyalties throughout generations and it's something that he could get really immersed into so he would have a series to read shows to watch movies to watch book uh, I already said book so yeah he has a lot to catch up on with this one series and one can only wonder if it would lead to the cones of Doonshire yes mm -hmm. I like to think that it would uh, well that was bad an off series <laughs> of that game Probably. Yeah. <laughs> that was just I couldn't wait for you to stop talking so I could say it. I was hoping. Oh. <laughs> mm. I couldn't wait. I'm sorry. I was pretty excited about it. You know I love a pun. Yes. Yes, you do. <laughs> no matter how bad they are, you do. That, <laughs> that was quality. That was quality humor. <laughs> I gave it a seven out of ten. You know what? I'll take it. I'll take it because it was very off the cuff. And so. speaking of puns, have you ever heard of a pun all? Mm -mm. It, there, are, there are competitions like national competitions for puns. They give you a topic, and then you have seven seconds to come up with a pun. Then it goes to the next person, and you cannot repeat the same pun. Hmm. It's intense. This was, sounds very, very strenuous. Yeah, I mean, it could be intense. It could be inside in like an auditorium. It could be in a lot of settings, but it looks very um, nerve wracking. Yeah, I'm sure. I am sure. <laughs> like a fun weekend for Alex. Right? So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to compete in or to just attend? To compete. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Look it up on YouTube, pun off or pun competition. They're hilarious. Almost as hilarious as my pun. Uh, so this doesn't have anything to do with puns, but I just want to talk about this next book that I picked out for Tom. And I feel like he might have already read it, maybe. But if he hasn't, it would probably change his life. It is Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People. He probably used this as like his personal Bible. I know we talked about his other one, you know, my other book being his personal Bible, but this one is probably like his guiding philosophy. I can only imagine. If he hasn't read it because he probably doesn't like to go to the library, then I think it would change his life for the better, for the better. You know, he, his, he does evolve over the series, but he still wants to be, you know, the it guy who is telling everybody, you know, why they should follow him and what they should do with their life and, you know, just ruling the roost. And I feel like this would really help him do that. Yeah, I agree. I and again, it would be organized by color. On he would have to read that first. And if either he reads it and then jerry's like oh that sounds like an interesting book or jerry starts to read it and tom says i'm not reading that because jerry read it and there's no way it could be cool you know i didn't even think about that i didn't even think about the possibility of jerry tainting any of these books but it's a very real possibility yeah although i love gary jerry larry we're you're good jerry. love him i want him to be my grandpa i feel like this might be a book that like um, would re-gift Jerry. <laughs> like, no, I, I already know how to make friends and stuff. Uh, this is my life. You're so great at bound. That's probably true. I could see him doing that. Would he have read that with John Ralphio before they started their business together? 
first of all, John Raffio doesn't read books, so probably not. Well, uh, also, he them. wouldn't do anything to like learn about business, so he might have it at his house. Like his dad's probably read it, yeah. but John Raffio, I don't think so. Maybe he watched like if it was a movie, he might watch it. Well, I but, thought that was like a picture book or a graphic novel he might have picked up and just thumbed through. He might be into a graphic novel now. It yeah. just depends on how weird it is, you know, what it's about. It just depends. Okay, well, I have another book for Donna. It is called You Are a Badass. And we all know Donna already knows. It's also... The subtitle is How to Stop Doubting Your Greatness and Start Living an Awesome Life. And I feel like Donna would read it and then she would buy a bajillion copies and give them to her friends. It would be a Galentine's Day gift. Yeah. 100%. Like, she would, and it wouldn't just be because like, you know, she wants to help her friends, which she would. She's a good friend, but she would also be like, you need to do better. Um, <laughs> you need to be as cool as me type mm -hmm. thing. So, um, I just feel like, you know, the title would grab her because she would be like, I am a badass. Like, oh yeah. She already knows. She just, oh, I feel like yeah. she reads a lot of self-help to just like maintain that energy and like confirm. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. A lot of self-affirmation, a lot of self-care going on over there, which really we can only hope to achieve. Yeah. Her level of self-confidence is amazing, and I'm jealous of her. I agree. I feel like that would also be the title of, like, her autobiography. Yeah. With, like, a mirror, like, just either her picture or her copy would have a mirror on it so she could look at herself and be like, yes, yes, I am. Yeah. Her, her, her biography like, so she can read it and yeah. look at herself in the mirror. It's like That's one right. of those books where you move the page and it's just, like, it has a hole with a mirror in it. Yeah. I yeah. love that. A self-affirmations book. I love it. And like where you have to like say, I mm -hmm. am a badass, like with, while looking at yourself in the pictures, the book's picture mirror. And Retta's <laughs> actual book essentially has that same title. Yeah, it's <laughs> called, it um, self-affirming. So close to being, sorry, I forgot. I meant to bring it to you. So close to being the, y'all don't even know. And she's right. Yes. She's right. Like, like, I wonder how much acting Retta did to be Donna. <laughs> because I just feel like she's that cool in real life. Yeah. In the earlier seasons where she was probably, you know, she was more tame. Mm -hmm. I feel like she probably had to act a lot more than like at the end. But the turning point might have been treat yourself. Because that is where yeah. she really blossoms into the Donna that we know and love. Uh, it's also the motto by which I live my life, especially today, because I didn't bring lunch, so I'm going to treat myself treat to yourself. some food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, at one point in the past, recent past, my it's not anymore, being clear, my Wi-Fi password was treat yourself. Um, and so, you know. Treat yourself, go still Mary Rogers Wi-Fi. It's not that anymore. <laughs> it's different. <laughs> um, but, oh. you know, it just... You got to remind yourself, yeah, maybe every day I'm trying to treat myself a little bit, but mm -hmm. mm -hmm. got to make Donna proud. Yeah. You do. <laughs> um, my second book for Ann Perkins, again, she is a nurse, she is in the medical field, and do you believe that she is naturally just a caregiver? She enjoys that, taking care of the people that she loves, and so also I feel like she is a romantic and so I picked up the English patient for her. I think that this would be something that she could have a good little cry over and something she could relate to because there is a nurse in it. And um, yeah, and it's not like a difficult read or anything. So it still fits with the theme of her like having a busy life and probably not wanting anything just like really strenuous. And um, yeah, I think she'd have a good cry over this one, don't you think? I think so. You know, especially now that she has a baby, she would definitely need some like her time to read a nice little book. And she probably would see herself reflected in that, you know, character. Definitely. Having not read the book, I'm basing it entirely on uh, the title. So don't <laughs> actually quote me on that. <laughs> yeah. 
And I'm sure Leslie would love it as well. You know, Leslie loves a good emotional book that she and Anne can read together. Maybe they can read it and then talk about it over the phone now that they don't live in the same place. Yeah. Yeah, I want that for them. I want them to have a little book group. I want everybody to be in a book club all the time, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> My bad, yeah. I would love to sit in on the Parks and Rec book club. I would yes, I would so going with that, um, one of the big points of Ben Wyatt is, I believe, his relationship with Leslie Nope. And my next recommendation is a way to kind of help him. He seems like very much like he would just do whatever he could to make her happy. And so the next book I would recommend for him to read is the Harry Potter <laughs> book series. Um, first one is In the Sorcerer's Stone by J.K. Rowling. Uh, it is, he ends up, spoiler alert, he ends up marrying Leslie Nope. Um, and I think firmly that that is her favorite book because she does a lot of uh, references to it. Mm -hmm. She said all the people, the only people she knows from Eagleton are like maybe Voldemort. And then there's a conversation where um, Anne complains about having walked Leslie making her watch all of the movies and she's like but I thought you liked all the movies and the reason Leslie thought Anne liked all the movies was because she watched them because she made her watch them and so, I think she made her read all the books too like I think she made her go through the whole fandom thing with her very reluctantly yes and I think she, yeah ben and go ahead there was that time when Leslie had the flu I think and she's like okay time to get ready for the chamber of secrets and Ben was like you mean the chamber of what was it? I don't know. We're, you know, know it wasn't the chamber about. secret. It was like a chamber of, it was a very yeah. government boring thing that would yeah. be as fun as a Harry Potter government thing. Yeah. There would be no mystical creatures, but I can see him definitely getting into that. And I can't think of a good Combs of Dunshire pun, um, pun for that one. So I'll think on it. I'll think on it and keep it, you know, in the little back of my head and hopefully yeah. share it later. I just think that would it would end up making Leslie really happy because now he'll she'll have her two best friends to talk about this with and it would probably be like a anniversaries gift to her maybe for the year I don't know I'm probably not mm. this. there's too many in one setting. I think she That's would like a have a day yeah. like yeah. okay this is the day that Ben finished the whole Harry Potter series and then they would celebrate it every year and it's on the calendar yeah. she has a scrapbook for it it's established well my last book for tom and i have actually put this book on my bard list because it looks really good it is called the chiffon trenches by andre leon talley who was like the first big african-american tastemaker in fashion he like worked at vogue for a little while he what he's like been the fashion editor at big fashion magazines he's the new spokesperson for uggs like he just started his thing for that and um, we know tom loves an ugg you know he has a women's size six foot or whatever and he wears his uggs to the office and Le leslie borrows them one time uh and i just really think he would enjoy you know getting a little bit of the scoop on the fashion industry i'm sure he knows everybody in it he just wants a little bit of gossip because who doesn't um and so i just think he would really enjoy it and like i said i have gotten this book for myself because I didn't know about this. He also styled Michelle Obama. So I'm just really excited to read the book. And I think Tom would also enjoy it, mostly because of his proximity to celebrity. But I just think he would, you know, really get some good wisdom out of this book. Yeah, I feel like he would want that guy to be his mentor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 100%. He probably follows him on Twitter. He retweets him while he's driving. It's a whole thing. He probably already knows who he is. He was not like me, just finding out about this wonderful person. <laughs> All right. Well, my last book for Donna is a little bit fun. It's called The Wedding Date. Um, it's a little bit spicy, but it has a really good, strong main character. And I feel like, you know, it would just be kind of Donna's escape from work and you know, because we all know she doesn't think about work <laughs> when she's not at work. Um, Who does? <laughs> but uh, I just feel like 
Donna would love it and it's a little bit of romance and then just kind of I just think she would like it I know that's not a great reason <laughs> I almost picked that one for Anne because yeah. I read good reviews about it being yeah. like a good beach read and stuff. It, yeah, for sure. And um, but you know, it still has strong characters, and I feel like Donna would definitely need a good strong character to relate to, and you know, to Everybody actually get needs into the story. A little light, fun romance. I can definitely see her reading that at night before bed in her all silk pajamas you know with her luxurious bedding and keegan michael key next to her yes. so oh. she's just living her best life reading that book yeah. living it up definitely my last book for ann is a self-help kind of book it's um by Brene brown it's called braving the wilderness the quest for true belonging and the courage to stand alone now, Brene Brown writes a lot of books like this, and honestly, I feel like any of them would have worked for Anne, but I chose this one because it got, like, really good reviews, and a lot of, of Anne's time on the series is spent trying to find a relationship that she's happy in, but also be okay being single and figure out who she is without being in a relationship and stuff, so I feel like this is something that she would read to try to... <laughs> get to know herself and figure out what her identity is on her own and be like an independent woman and all that. She would like this. I'm sure she would love it, especially in a relationship with Chris, who is a big personality. He is a lot. So she probably would, you know, need a little bit of something where she could work on herself um, and be a better partner to him who would probably see it and, and then also read it so he could connect better with her. I just feel like they would both read it together. I don't know why I want everyone to read a book with everyone else all the time. <laughs> That's my theme today is everyone should have a book friend. Well, it's the Lots best friends episode. That is true. It's a friend. See, look, I was totally on trend this whole time then. It was exactly. totally purposeful. Ignore what I just said. All right, um, my last recommendation for Ben Wyatt is basically because he's a huge 90s culture fan and it also goes along with the other series because I feel like he would be the type now that he's a dad he would really want to share uh, and tell stories from what he's interested in with his kids um, Game of Thrones would probably not be a good thing to go with with this type of uh, story bedtime story type stuff children don't fare well in there no. in that show uh, and book series I haven't read it or seen it, but I've just know enough of it where there's uh, some questionable content for um, toddlers around that mm -hmm. age. So uh, the next book, again, because of his uh, fandom of 90s would be Ready Player One. This one came out in 2011. Uh, Ready Player Two came out in 2020. What? I just happened to have it in here. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all could read it together. Yeah, yes. exactly. Donna and, and Ben. So I think he would love that book. He would get all the references. I did not. I got some of them, but he would know all of them. He would love that book. When yeah. you when you like brought it up, I was like, oh my gosh, that's perfect yes. for Ben. Yes, so I think it focuses more on the '80s, but I think there's a lot of '90s and there's some carryover. So mm -hmm. that might be why you. Some people don't get a lot of the references because of like their age. Yeah, if they're too I had to young. look up some of them. I had to look up some of the things. And also, my family is not like a video games family. Like, yeah. So I had to look up extra. I still enjoyed it. It's still good. But he would definitely know all the things. He would get all the references. He would probably laugh in the right places. He yeah. would love it. And plus, I feel like it's a, a fun. Do oh, what? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so I, was say, I feel like it would be such a fun read because I feel like he was such a serious child. I mean, he was mayor of Ice Town or whatever for or mayor. <laughs> he, was mayor <laughs> he was mayor for like what was he got? Like, he was like, yeah. so I feel like this would be nice for him to like relive what maybe he missed out on. Mm -hmm. yeah. He was so serious to still like run for mayor. <laughs> And so I think it's also a timely one just because there, a lot of it is on, in virtual reality and like what we're doing now, everything now is remote and distance and everything. So it 
it is a timely selection. So yeah, I think that'd be a good uh, choice. Excellent recommendation, Charlie. Excellent. Yeah. And we do have a closing segment. Like last time we did one, uh, Alex, no, Mary Rogers is going to introduce this special segment. Yes, today's special segment is You Heard, Whip Heard. And we wanted to kind of, um, you know, get excited about Purd Happily, a recurring character on Parks and Recreation, where he was a journalist, but he kind of talked around the sentence and, and added a lot of words and just kind of stated the obvious. Um, yeah. But I love Purd. And so my pick, oh, sorry, the, you heard with Purd is going to be about audiobooks. And let me do a quick spiel for talking books. <laughs> but we provide uh, audiobooks for people who can't read standard print. And so we can mail them in the post through the postal service, or you can download from BARD, which stands for Braille and Audio Reading Download, and directly onto a device. So I listen to a lot of them on BARD, but I grabbed one that is an actual talking book. Um, so I just wanted to kind of show y'all. This is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Y'all, this one is so good. Like the story is um, this band back in the 70s and kind of talking about, um, you know, their life during it and like tours and personal lives during it and everything. And the audiobook is so good because it's different characters have different narrators so you know it basically feels like you're hearing it directly from the band and honestly I was listening to it and it took me a while to realize that this was not an actual band <laughs> like I thought oh okay let me look more into this band because that's interesting and like all this and no it's all fiction <laughs> you were probably not the only one no I couldn't have been and drawn in like, like it's watching Spinal Tap thinking it's an actual documentary. <laughs> I don't know that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. No. But y'all, it is it's so good. And I think they're making a movie of it. I think they've already made the movie, and I'm pretty sure okay. they're all street in it, um, which is reason enough to yeah. watch it. If that is in fact true. Ricky and the Flash. Thing, Ricky and the Flash is that maybe a, that's what I'm thinking. That was based, oh. that's based on that. Think about. I don't think so. There's a movie maybe they're making Meryl Streep in it about a band. Oh, it's so going to be a so TV mini series. Oh. Sorry. Okay, so I, I had to look call. it up. But yeah. <laughs> oh, there are some good people in it though. We don't have to talk about it, but <laughs> I'm excited. Like, I just love the story, and I think everybody should listen to the audiobook. Like, I'm sure the print book is good too, but <laughs> it's even better on audio. Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess I'm next. I have been telling everybody that will listen about this book. So I'm really excited <laughs> about this segment. Um, recently Matthew McConaughey came out with his memoir called Green Light. Oh no. And y'all, I don't want to be discourage anyone from <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> oh no. 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 I knew she had picked this green light. So beforehand, this is why we That's play it, right? What, Charlie? No. <laughs> just, you know what? It'll be all right. All right. All right. It oh will. my gosh. No. <laughs> that was so perfect. No, we can talk about it together, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, book friends. I I don't like to discourage people from reading, but I'm telling everybody, do not read this book. Listen to this book because he narrates it. Yes. And he is an amazing storyteller. Is he not, Charlie? He is like the his his cadence, his delivery, the the things that he's done in life or has witnessed are amazing. Amazing. The, it did throw me off a little bit at the prologue and like tell me if you thought this too. Um it sounded almost like a slam poem whenever he uh -huh. was like right before he started with the outlaw logic it was way like, I had to go back and read some of that with the physical book but once he gets into the actual book itself it's phenomenal 
Well, he does throughout it. Like, I guess throughout his life, he's just like written different poems and stuff. I mean, he's, you know, a writer along with everything else he does. And so he does throw in periodically like old poems from when he was a teenager. And yes. So it's a nice, a nice selection of that. But like his accent and the way he tells these stories, it's just, it's so entertaining. I love it. It, it sounds like you can tell in his voice, it sounds like he's sitting back with something cold to drink and just reliving this with a smile on his face. Like you can hear that type of joy in the yes. story. And he's such a like down to earth person. I mean, he's just like a good old country boy, you know? So yeah. like, you, like I, I was like, I feel like he could be my cousin or something. <laughs> like Hollywood has not done anything to him. Like oh, he's yeah. just straight up Texas good old boy like all those lincoln commercials have not phased him he is still regular i'm gonna have to add this to my right. bar web my bar and i'm not even well. like a huge matthew mcconaughey fan as far as his mm -hmm. movies and stuff so i just read it because like i was curious and it's, it's so good so he it is surprising because of his the characters he's played before and just like his demeanor he to me he's almost like a james franco his intellect is surprising like um this is a quote from the book it said um the book contains philosophies that can be objectively understood and if you choose subjectively adopted by either changing your reality or changing how you see it that is not wooderson what is wooderson that's his character from Days and Confused. Like that is not Matthew McConaughey. That's not like him in Fool's Gold or How to Lose a Guy in Ten Days. It's yeah, way deeper than I was anticipating. You thought Matthew McConaughey was dumb? Well, I didn't think he was what? dumb. I just didn't think he was like going to be a philosopher over here. Mm -hmm. Like it was surprising. Mm -hmm a self-help book slash memoir and some of it can get like hallmark cardish but for the most part it's a phenomenal listen okay well look at y'all on the same wavelength <laughs> about the matthew mcconaughey book well i did not bring an example of mine today um but in the thread of treat yourself and self-care one of the things that I have been doing is re-listening to all the books that I used to love when I was a kid, especially the Ramona series by Beverly Cleary. I love those books. They are so homey and so just, they just make me feel so good because it really, like Ramona is a person. She's not just a kid in, you know, how typical kid books portray children as just, you know, very, I don't know, just very flat and they don't have emotions, but it just goes through how she feels because I can remember feeling like that. I still feel like, I still feel some of those feelings sometimes and it just really puts me back into, you know, the space that I was in when I read them the first time. I did not realize that the first one was published in like 1955. I was like, oh, this is last week. <laughs> they just wash their hair once a week. I don't know. But it is just something I have thoroughly enjoyed. I've been doing it a lot. And it's really helped, you know, with all this, all this, all this craziness. <laughs> you know the COVID and all that stuff but I've just really loved it and I really love listening to it because I used to love listening to audiobooks when I was a kid I would just play them on repeat I would like paint or do whatever and just listen to audiobooks all day so it just puts me back I just enjoy it so I said they held up over time or was it more just a nostalgic thing uh I do actually think that they've held up over time and I was actually looking it up this morning and she is a, apparently Beverly Cleary wrote it to kind of transcend time like she doesn't make a lot of specific references to stuff that's happening and I mean you can definitely tell that it's older because they don't really have use a lot of technology but it's not so it's not like reading you know Laura Ingalls Wilder it's just you know, they talk about the stove and the phone and all that good stuff. I mean, her mom leaves them at home, which wouldn't happen today, but they've definitely held up. I do really enjoy them. They hold up much better than the Junie B. Jones books, which I've also been re-listening to, but she gets on my nerves sometimes. <laughs> 
So anyway, that is my audiobook story. That I talked for a lot longer than I meant to when I first started, <laughs> but I just love them. Yeah, I think that's great. I think more people should do that. I mean, I get a hankering to read a Dr. Seuss book every once in a while. You should. Look, treat yourself. I didn't love them as a kid. They had weird characters. I was just like, I don't, I don't know how I feel about this. But as an adult, I'm like, oh my gosh, there's so many like underlying things that I wouldn't, I didn't get as a kid. And I'm like, this is really good. <laughs> Especially other places you'll go that I cry every time. <laughs> That's what, have y'all read uh, Coraline by Neil Gaiman? No. Yeah. I watched the movie. But I, okay. I hear it's yeah scary. it's it's dark as an adult like for kids it's this epic adventure of this like only child but as an adult it's like this is so dark and twisted like it's it's a scary book it's like a horror story as an adult reading it so hmm. that was it so well I want to say something that Perd might say that I feel like he would say he would say now those are audiobooks books you can read with your ears oh, that, was so <laughs> that was so bad but you know i love purd i'm just gonna say it that was he's good, very he's very unique yes that was a good closing and so this is the end of episode two our best friends episode of parks and recommendations and we will see you next time for the possibly last one episode three see y'all later Bye. Bye. Bye.